Wow, Tor, you're always so positive. You seem to find the bright side in any old piece of crap. Oh, I find it truly fascinating. How okay, you dude. I was with you when you defended Bal and Wonder World, but Bro, Sonic I love you, you man. Your Step videos have such far. good energy. Huh? Yeah, I'm positive. I'm always so happy. Well, I've had enough! <laughs> Okay, well, I definitely do this like things, you know? Like Skunk Face, Elden Scroll, Overman, God, what a vile game. League of Ledges, ew, disgusting art style. Really, the only reason really that I'm so positive is because I really only talk about the things that I care about. It's either because I think they're cool or interesting or funny or whatever other reason. And what I don't like, I ain't interested in, so I even bother spending any time on it. It's simply not in my periphery. Besides, I'm mostly cool with letting tastes be tastes and not raining on any proverbial parades. That said, there has been one, one. time where I canned the video way far into production due to simply notent, couldntntnt, wouldntnt, screwing with what I was reviewing. That being Eternal Sonata. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's a well-liked game that I may very well come away with like in today, but back then I thought the battle system was getting grating. The story wasn't going anywhere I was particularly intrigued by yet. I also low-key ran out of heals in a dungeon, and most of all, I HATED THIS LITTLE FREAK! Though moreover, I'd also just played all of the Final Fantasy XIII games back-to-back -back prior to playing, which is a lot of JRPG to take in all at once. Hence why I dropped the title and the video, feeling too burnt out to run back and get healing items or to invest the time into trying to vibe with the cast more and moved on to something else, assuming I simply didn't like Eternal Sonata. So, of course, now I'm coming at it having just played through Live Alive and Three Valkyrie profiles, which is also a lot of JRPG to take in all at once. Can't give up this time though, as I have a mission. You see, I seen this screen shot of this comfy little snowy town. I must get here, see it in person and talk about it, which is kind of my whole thing with the game as well. While I did didn't like all aspects, I did, even back then, instantly vibe with what I saw of its beautiful visuals, music, and cutscenes. She was only 14. And during those brief 14 years, what did she do? Simply cherish a love of music and revel in her girlish dreams. <laughs> The voice you just heard is that of the 1800s Polish composer Frédéric Chopin. Man of snooze and man a dream of him having adventures with anime children saving the world from a tyrannical government. Conflict happens, philosophical ponderings about the natures of art, reality, and purposes in life. Yet, it do all still be a dream from Chopin's deathbed. I feel like a basic take would be something along the lines of, well, in that case, nothing matters, but I'm honestly far too distracted by how pretty everything is to comment on that ATM. I mean, just take a look at this. This is its goddamn sewer level. The first dungeon, RPG rats and everything, but see how unlike literally any other sewer level this is? Granted, I have nothing against them to begin with, they're just modern day dungeons with, if you ask me, often far more diverse or interesting color palettes than most actual dungeony dungeons. The thick green fog. The spooky music, all the drippings drooping from the pipe-like structures up high. Or the Crash 2 sewers with all spanner of cool hue, color contrasts, boasting reds, blues, browns, and greens topped off with cute GIF-esque animated textures, I again see no reason to hate on sewer levels just on the face of them. Sonatas, though, is so violently rich with detail even still. 
from cobwebs, swaying plants, and the dynamic texturing on the floor being one of grassy dirt over anything traditionally Suarian, to the adorable purple lanterns, the water pouring out from wherever, the drippies making neat impacts on ground, the little slizzard scurrying around, and the cool, soft, yet vivid lighting choices implying water caustics along the beautifully blue water walls. Shit looks clean enough to drink. It's all just so artistic. Of course, any game's locale is, technically speaking, it's always a creative interpretation no matter how real it tries to be, but basically not a single space in this place looks default. You'll never be in forest. Careful considerations regarding coinciding colors will always be made between the dirt between the trees and the trees along the dirt. Each step on a stair will be ricketed or textured in its own way. One tree could be slanted, the other could be bendy, fat or thin, or even coated in vines and critters. There's rarely, if ever, a single repeated texture, sprite or asset placed similarly within view, always benefiting from shit being linear and cameras being locked the heck down. This all really lended them the ability to carefully, paintingly, or even pre-rendered backgroundsly, consider its picturesque compositions, so that each house, interior, plant, town, dungeon or road could have a unique artistic touch, like the wee rainbows with sparkles on water and the sheaves of light peering through trees, all achieved using 2D elements faced cleverly as opposed to the unmovable camera. And moreover, Sonata also cleverly dodges the temptation of using the latest, shiniest tech, thus stressing performance less and freeing up room for assets. It never defaults to crazy lighting engines and shaders, for instance, as many other games of its era did. The sunlight dancing on ground past leaves isn't done by placing a point light behind the trees having it happen automatically. Which even still would require hella tweaking and planning and balancing. I'm, I'm not knocking the practice at all, making games is never easy, but is instead simulated with a animated texture, and so, at least to me, it instantly stands out in such a cute handmade way. I guess if I was to analogousy both practices, I'd say that the point light shit is more so a well-framed photograph of shit that was already there, and the gif lights are akin to a more deliberated artistic touch done by a painter, someone who wanted it to be there and knew how to make it. Which is essentially the entire game in a nutshell, visually speaking. A living painting, concept art come to life. Nothing left to chance or defaulted, everything in some way interpreted expressly. Love these Windows XP penis fields though. Mehen ass. Or perhaps Enchanted Arms ass. And peep this one random house too. There are so many little houses and shops like the cool violin one or the goat lady's tall log cabin. So by Sonata standards, this one ain't particularly remarkable. It's just, even then, still just fucking look at it. The wee bonsai tree with the apples, the glowing door of intrigue, the colorfully adorned painted plates, the fun markings on the cabinet and ceiling, and the many books, pots, bottles and baskets, there's just so much going on for a random NPC house with no explicit purpose. It's fucking great. Shout out the goddamn mustache guy over here too. Swag. Sometimes though, the budget can be a little bit too apparent, like with the fucking PS1 rock over here. This thing has like five polygons, but I must say it's just part of the overall charm of it all. Besides these immensely densely detailed mushroom clutters and the adorablest roadside hotel more than make up for it. So again, Visually, I definitely didn't, don't, and won't ever have any beef with what Eternal Sinatra Cat, what are you doing? is putting down. Anyway, a cool thing I found while researching was that this game was made by the same team responsible for Fragile Dreams, which is easily a top 5 Wii game for me. And looking at it now, yeah, I can definitely tell. It's got a very similar visual style, especially tonally and character facial expressionally. There's that same sense of forlornness. A lot of somber faces, thousand yard man meme level stares, out loud philosophical ponderings with lingering close-ups, it's all quite similar. So, so why then and how then did it annoy me in Sonatas of Eternal's past and not the fragile dreams? Are Chopin's dreams not good enough? Well, what sticks out to me right away even this time as a reason as to why back then in a shitty state I bounced off of this bitch is the fact that the American voice acting is a... Uh... 
I'm gonna pound you fair and square. More than a little bit penisy. It's all very squeaky, a little whiny, a bit stilted, a tad jokes don't land at all, Ali. And also, these characters are dumb as bricks. Except for this chick. She's cool. But I failed to know this back then, though, but did pick up on now, though, is their ages as stated on the menu screen, with which I thought as if... Ah, well, yeah, of course the eight-year-old is going to say dumb shit and the 16-year-old is going to be overconfident and a little mean to the eight-year-old and obviously a 14-year-old is bound to ask a whole host of pea brain questions while lingering on melancholically. They're little kids. So in that, I'd say the character writing is pretty great, actually. Very convincingly childlike and the fact that the adults of the party that I never got to originally aren't this way in any way speaks to the intent here. That said, I'm still not huge on adults trying to sound like babies but oh guys I think I'm gonna wet myself I guess I'll simply put up with it the writing in general though is quite flowerly and almost book-esque which I dig in this case I do generally prefer it when dialogues written a bit more casually but I certainly don't dislike prosy shit even when no human ever would talk that way in IRL a lot of people would shit on this probably same way they do with Kingdom Hearts or with similarly veined takes that I hate like the best editing is the editing that you don't even notice when it comes to movies like, bitch, the artifice in artisticness is the artiness laid bare and I see no reason as to why hiding the art part of the art would ever make any sense. Because that's what it is, stupid. So do I care now? No, uh, I think the cast is charming. Same way that I find the common critique of the plot being a dream rendering the stake stakeless to be largely pointless too. Stories are always fake. They're stories. Just suspend your goddamn disbelief. Besides, I adore the many philosophically charged social and political commentary headspaces the setting and text allow the game to get in. Sure, yes, some characters can be a little thin and I can't say that I cared that much for a few of them being more so just stuck in the midst of it all through chance, but but I didn't really mind that as it's commentaries on drug abuse and how material conditions often brought on purposefully by leadership with nefarious attentions result in said drug abuse and how that can keep people in check to a degree and how such said leadership exploits nature or encourages discriminatory attitudes often in those most subjected to the brunt of the shit of this leadership like said drug abuse or bad labor conditions all kept me very engaged. And yeah, while well, it explores this this mostly through fairy tale isms though even then not exclusively given the very real earth human at the center of this all i do very much adore and respect how it keeps up a sense of optimism because of this no matter how dark thematically sonata gets tonally it's rarely that dire which i'd argue serves as a commentary in and of itself Again, the easy go-to gamer critique of the game seems to be that nothing in it matters you to dream, but nothing in real life matters either, really, in the grand scheme, and to find meaning in that, or to have joys in life despite that, or to understand this and not turn into a nihilist asshole, I think is something worth encouraging in people, or at the very least something you can flex on doomers with, and Eternal Sonata has great at that. It boldly, proudly, and intently claims that yes, the world is a fuck, and yes, you're gonna die one day, and Sure, technically nothing is ever as important as it is in the moment and to those involved, but fuck it man, those fucking moments though. There's just so much cool shit still. Friends, nature, cities, cats on benches, ambitions that make you happy, goals to complete, dreams to have, feelings to ponder, and whatever you end up leaving behind, whether that's world changing piano pieces or a game with a snowy town that's this goddamn pretty. Because yeah, I made it. I did it. And I'm glad I did, for real, for real. As not gonna lie, this snowy town is more or less the peak of what I mean when I say that nothing in Eternal Sonata is default visually. From the igloo-shaped houses and their horn-shaped chimneys to it doing away with the typical snow town wooden buildings, brick walls, and gingerbreadian vibes. Instead, it's got cool, swirly, turquoise, and yellow structures, pipes of glistening, boiling water to keep warm, and suspended archways and bridges framing the path entirely made up of ice. It is very tiny. This street is all it is. It's two homes, a pub, a shop, and a hotel, but the careful deliberation that went into how the bushes and trees were placed alongside the lighting contrasts and how beautifully all of that unfolds when slowly walking through its tunnel design, gradually revealing itself with a slight swerve and twist as lights, signs, people, and a fucking train 
unfurl from behind the cozy framings. It, again, it just feels so painted. It's a level of detail normally only lend it to a still image a artist will have bonded over for fuck knows how long, and every location in this game is like that, and it's all in engine. That, to me, is legit really impressive, technically and artistically. That feels good! Oh, uh, right, the gameplay. I dig that it uses Final Fantasy X's general structure with the big, big hallways, and the battle system is kind of like a turn-based rigid tills. Got some arena based strategies and depth stemming from positioning, really emphasizing speed given that the turns is times and the feel of hits definitely feel like hits are hitting, so that's good. But sadly, the gameplay do be where I am most reminded of why I fell off of this bitch all those many years ago. Mainly relating to its pacing, boasting many very huge dungeons that all overstayed their welcomes to me, often having only two enemy types max, which made the battles feel quite repetitive by the end of every dungeon. That in and of itself though wouldn't have even been too bad if it spruced it up a lot in between, but uh, it does not manage its quiet time well at all in my opinion. I mean the towns are great, but they are just NPCs to talk to and a few homes to enter and a shop or two. Never anything else. Sonata doesn't really do events, I guess, if that makes any sense. Example: A child fell down a cliff whom you have to save. A fun moment where you have to find help, alert the townsfolk, or skill a mountain with a fun minigame? Nah, uh, just a dungeon with enemies all the way down. Or how about afterwards when you get taken prisoner and have to escape? Surely that's a fun stealthy segment? Or a puzzle moment? No? No, it's just a dungeon with enemies all the way out. Every road, forest, cave, or whatever else is like that, which sort of instills a sense of repetitivity that the game never manages to get out of. Never to the point of me having a bad time, I should say, but just something that I wished was different. The wall market clothing hunt, for example, or the pizza competition, or the mystery solving desert town in Enchanted Arms, or the cute train segment in A Thousand Year Door, those tend to be my fave segments in JRPGs, and Sonata legit has none of that. And going by the relatively high encounter amounter, it being about 30 hours long, and the fact that they kind of made up dungeons out of nothing, shoving them into spaces with non voiced cutscenes like a comedic relief mirror moment opening up a whole ass world, or the graveyard of a tiny mountainside town being this entire fucking death dimension both following pretty quickly after fairly large dungeons too, breaking up what otherwise would have been longer non-combative exploration and story segments in a shorter but tighter paced game, all sort of tell me that they maybe were struggling a bit with budget versus scale and didn't have a great idea on how to maximize the spaces that they built. Which are some of the nicest spaces, so it's a real shame that they couldn't have focused on things like little adventure gamey bits or mini gamey bits to do that more effectively. Oh, and also the fact that it boots you back to the title screen upon death whilst usually only placing one soul save point per area at time sends the one by the end. The dungeons are way too fucking long for that dog, goddamn. But then, on the other hand, this is also the type of game to put the player on a snowy colorful boat filled entirely with Christmas decorations, and I can't bring myself to hate that. So. Yeah, I like Eternal Sonata. Hell yeah. When I was 14 years old, I got dragged out of my mom's house by child protective services and spent the rest of my teens in homes, quote unquote. I.e. you get a roof above your head, but fuck you if you think you can feel at home at all or do whatever you like. 
Oh, to be fair, they were cool with me pursuing music, but they did not allow video games. I had to hand in my PSP and DS so that they could be put into a safe, only to be used on the weekends for a limited time, and I was barely there during the weekends anyway, and I defo wasn't allowed a console in my room or anything, so me and video games fell out of touch for a while, until about 2011 when Minecraft happened. Aside from, like, Mirror's Edge, GTA 4, Final Fantasy 13, Sam and Max Season 3, and MGS 4, the rest of the 7th gen remained pretty much entirely a mystery to me until I actively started making videos about it here on this channel. Only seeing bits and pieces in commercials or the odd magazine, because it's not like I had much in the way of private internet access there either, though uh, they were cool with letting us use LimeWire at times. However, what they also had, and I piss, shit, and come you not, was a half-busted 360 in the living room with one, one video game, which was Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball 2. Yeah, Raad van de Kinderbescherming sponsored by Dead or Alive Titty Game. I'm guessing it was donated because we often got food that we threw out and clothes no one wore that way too, as I think people thought we were all starving children in there when the reason we were there was so that we wouldn't be, but I don't know. For at least two whole years of my life though, this was the only goddamn game I was allowed to play. And so I grew to FUCKING DESPISE IT! Man, you got all these bitches being like, Milky Pink. Crimson red, sapphire blue. But this motherfucker over here is just orange. So I'm picking her. God. <laughs> the game of the game essentially revolves around buying gifts for women to make them like you somewhat more. And maybe I simply lack the simp gene needed for this shit, but I really ain't getting anything out of it. Sure, they're pretty, but also they ain't real. Can't believe though it has the shiny 360, reminiscent of the shiny grass, and the shiny road, and the shiny wood. But this little mini games can be fun. The jet ski races are fast as heck and look really, really great. Volleyball is cute, though like all of them, super very simple, and doing them over and over, which is more or less what the game is, ain't really for me. There's no horror guys, I'll say that much. Ready! Do love the Sega Sunny Beach vibes though, I could see Sonic running across this title screen, I could picture Kiryu vibing here, it's a good energy and quite technically impressive even still. I also adore the music, they got the goddamn Sweet 16 MTV show theme in here which is amazing and also, holy hell, it has a casino. Hmm. It really is a Sonic game. As a kid, I wouldn't have cared, but I could easily spend hours in here now. The Blackjack Bandit is back in town, baby! The Slot Machine Slut is bringing home the bag. The Poker Pro does... Uh, not know how to play poker, but, but, but you can bet I can spam my way to a winning roulette any day. Swag. Set your age. Hmm... I don't know. I'll leave it be, because sweaty 17-year-old boy seems like it will be the target audience for this. Unless I'm missing something, DOA Extreme does seem a tad meager content-wise. Minigame, casino, and look at women, the latter being the selling point, I suppose. But I can certainly see how I grew to hate this, being more or less forced to play a game about doing the same things over and over, over and over. Although, I can sort of enjoy its carefree bimboness. You know, for an hour or two. Uh, that's good enough for me. That feel when Toma no Manobu no Idagaki. And thus, those is the games that I hate. Only other game that I have a difficult relationship is Deadly Premonition 2. Uh, in that, despite enjoying it, events and contents post-playing resulted in severe negative reflections upon further review. I actually wrote a ton of stuff about it too. My theories and opinions on Swery as an artist, how I think he works best and worst, and how shit ended up all problematic this way, but... I, I don't think I want to bog down this video with that, but I might drop it as a thing later though. Something about writing a video being critical about a person per se feels wrong and I'm also not a critic to begin with. I'm a like dick. I actually like video games. So uh, we'll see, I guess. What I can say though is that I quite like the games that I hate. Uh, the end.